Welcome back to another edition of Clearly Conveying. I'm Chris Long and I'm joined today by Jeff Poe. And we're gonna be talking today about one of our less utilized, but I think maybe one of our most valuable uh, services that we perform at PPI, and that would be the conveyor survey. Jeff, uh, how would you describe a conveyor survey and, and what's its purpose? Conveyor surveys are very important. Generally speaking, when PPI sends field engin engineers out to a job site to help or assist with a conveyor survey, we are there to collect all of the dimensional information on your pulleys and idlers to create a database so that you know what components you're using on your conveyor. And Chris, this becomes very, very important, especially when you consider a number of things. Uh, first, when it comes to different job sites, uh, like any other company in this country, there's a lot of turnover. And when it comes to having a database of all of the components on your conveyors uh, readily available, most of that information is lost in the shuffle. And so there may be uh, a lot of operations out there where a foreman or a maintenance personnel, they really don't know what's on their conveyor until something breaks and they have to replace it. Now, when we survey conveyors, generally you're noting what type idlers are being used and you're getting specific like the idler diameter, the, the belt width, the SEMA series of the idlers. Uh, with regards to collecting information on the idlers, when PPI conducts a uh, conveyor component survey, we will collect all of that information for our customers and then put that into a database so that you know, for example, on conveyor 1A, you can pull a booklet out or an electronic PDF in our day mm -hmm. and, um, and you can look to see what components you're using, which makes it very easy to uh, get a quote and order for components that you may need. Now, Chris, what do you know? Um, that generally happens. If you have a breakdown, does that normally happen nine to five? No, it usually happens at the most uh, you know inconvenient uh, possible time and stress levels shoot through the roof. That's where I see the surveys as being a huge asset for a lot of locations. Uh, when they have that breakdown, we have cataloged all of their different componentry there and it's been actually measured by you know, your field engineers, your, your crew, and it's been done correctly and you know you can rely on what that head pulley is when it breaks down we have all that information so it takes a lot of the stress off of the customer to go out and try to retrieve that information. Chris you bring up a very very good point. Um, first of all conveyor surveys uh, can uh, require a little time normally we like to have a shutdown period where people aren't working on the conveyors and the production's down uh, so that we can come in and have access to the conveyors while they're not in operation so that we can safely reach over and get the measurements that we need on a conveyor. But more importantly to your point, Chris, um, if you do have a breakdown and you're not sure what components you have on that conveyor, you can see how easily that costs you money because now you're having to pay machine shops or you're having people to rush stuff in, expedite everything because you didn't know what you had. Um, and, and you don't have it in stock or at a spare, and, and now you have to pay all those extra exorbitant fees, I might add, to just get something super quick, which drives up your maintenance costs uh, just to get something replaced. Where these surveys really um, benefit our end users is by collecting all of this information and having a, a database, you can plan ahead. You can look at all of the different type idlers that you use on your job site. You can look at all of the different types of pulleys and the bearings and the bushings that you have on your job site and the shaft sizes. And you can plan ahead and actually use that information to say, okay, these are my critical spares. These are my critical conveyors and these are my critical components. I need to make sure I have good stock on all of those components. And you can pull all of that information from a full conveyor survey. And when your team's out there, are they also looking at thing like, uh, things like standardizing certain componentry? Yeah, that's, a, that's another uh, excellent point. Not only can you identify what components are being used on a conveyor, but also you can take that information and you can see what conveyors use similar components. And then you can reduce the number of spares that's needed uh, to cover both of those conveyors. I think that's one of the things that's really overlooked by our customers is the survey not only allows them to be more reactive when they do have a breakdown, but now all of a sudden we're taking a proactive stance and a proactive view of their entire system. Absolutely. So let's uh, 
Let, let's talk a little bit about what is required when you get on the job site. Number one, PPI field engineers that conduct conveyor surveys every week with different customers. Um, they do have all of their required safety training, MSHA training, OSHA training, and all of their trainings up to date so they know how to safely work around conveyors and uh, lock out, um, try out, or lock out, tag out, try out. Um, and so when we arrive on site, we're prepared to go to work. Now, when you get there, it's very, very easy uh, in most cases to get the information that you need. You can walk alongside the conveyor, uh, whether you have catwalks or you're on the ground, and you, for example, if we wanted to start with idlers, you, you get a few key dimensions on your idlers. As I mentioned earlier, you would identify the can diameter, uh, what type of uh, idler you have, whether it's a troughing idler, the troughing degree, is it a 20 degree, a 35 degree, 45 degree? You would get the bolt centers for your foot pads because as Chris mentioned earlier, whatever idler we send you, we want it to drop in place. We want that idler to work so that there's no fabrication needed, no adjustments needed. You literally can take your old idler out and drop your new idler in. And, and essentially you would do that for each different type of idler on a conveyor. Okay. What about then your pulley services? So with regards to pulleys, it's, uh, it's a little more in depth. There's quite a few more um, measurements that are required. And in addition to that, most of our conveyor pulleys are protected by guards. And typically we need some assistance from on-site personnel to uh, work ahead of us and remove guards around the tail pulleys, remove guards around the bend pulleys, remove guards around the drive pulleys so that we can get access to get the dimensions that are needed. So let's. Let's move on to a head drive pulley here in our training center on our test conveyor and we'll demonstrate some of the dimensional information that's gathered when we survey a conveyor drive pulley. All right. Well, Jeff, here we are at this head pulley and I know there's certain information that you guys gather that you'll gather on any uh, pulley. You'll be first of all looking face width, it's really important to you guys. Uh, you're going to be gathering the diameter. If it is a lag pulley, you guys will be looking at the lagging, how thick it is and what the grooving pattern is on it. That's something you guys would record. Uh, bushings are extremely important. You need to know the, the hub and bushing size that's uh, associated with the pulley. Uh, one thing that's oftentimes overlooked though, I think is, is the shaft itself, right? Uh, because in many pulleys, there's actually two different dimensions you're gonna have to get off that. Not only your shaft extensions, but when it comes to shaft diameters, what customers sometimes aren't as uh, conscious of is the fact that sometimes you have a different diameter down at the, at the hub than you do at the bushing or out of the bearing itself. So on here, for example, we've got a two and 15 down here at the hub. Out on the bearings, it's only two and seven. So you need both of those different diameters on the shaft, correct? Absolutely, Chris. And, and that is a very, very common mistake made um, when someone goes out to a conveyor to collect information in a rush. Mm -hmm. You know, they've had a breakdown. They don't know entirely what they need. And it's, it's more easily identifiable to just look at the shaft diameter at the bearing or to, to get a, a number, a part number off of the bearing. And then if a replacement pulley is ordered just by that information along, alone, they'll order a straight shaft, which mm -hmm. is the same diameter right. as the bearing. And the customer may not realize that the shaft diameter at the bushing, as you pointed out, is, is actually larger. And so you might be putting a pulley back into service that's not capable of carrying the same load as the one that you took out because you missed, or whoever measured up the pulley, missed that the shaft diameter at the bushing is actually larger than the shaft diameter at the bearing. Right, so that's all information you would gather on any non-drive pulley in the conveying system, correct? Yeah. But there's some additional critical uh, information you're gonna have to gather from the drive side. Absolutely. So when surveying a drive pulley, the, the drive side of the pulley is uh, super important, Chris. And, and why that is super important is because whatever pulley that you put back in the service needs to, number one, be nearly identical mm -hmm. so that uh, you have the same shaft diameter at the bearing, the same shaft diameter at the coupling. Oftentimes, there is a, sh a journal in the shaft for a coupling or a gearbox, for example, in this case, um, and then that shaft extension. So knowing how much of a shaft extension you have from the center of the bearing out to the end of the shaft is critical for the replacement pulley assembly that goes into service because you'd like for that pulley to bolt into place and you'd like to be able to slide your drive right back into the same place as, as it was before you disassembled it and took the old pulley out of service. Mm -hmm. And so that's some of the things that PPI field engineers are very good at is being able to estimate those shaft lengths. If you're using a shaft mount motor and reducer system like what we have here, um, it's, 
it's fairly easy to estimate what that overall shaft length is. You can make the shaft length um, a, a little longer as long as it doesn't interfere with um, anything going on inside the guard itself. Uh, you don't have to be super exact with it. Now, if you had a setup where you had like a, a, a right angle um, motor and reducer assembly with rigid couplings, then you got, or even uh, flexible couplings for that matter, you got sometimes uh, you will need to remove the coupling covers to get the exact extension from the center of the bearing to the end of the shaft to make sure that whatever assembly that you put in, uh, that shaft is not gonna be too long or too short, it's gonna be exactly what you need. I guess just to wrap things up, um, there are standard sizes for most uh, pulleys and idlers that are used in conveyor surveys, Chris. Uh, you mentioned earlier when you get the diameters in the face widths, uh, there are standard pulley diameters out there and they normally go in increments of two um, up to about 24 inch diameter and then from 24 you go to 30 and from 30 you go to 36 and 42. Uh, and, and with regards to face width, those also normally increase in increments of uh, two to three depending on your belt width. Um, the standard face width for pulleys up to 42 inch belt width would be belt width plus two. And then once you get above 42 inch belt width, it's belt width plus three. And then on engineer class conveyors, it could even be belt width plus six as far as your standard face width. So the field engineers are, again, very knowledgeable about this uh, type of standard information that's out there. And when they collect all of this data and put it into a database, it equips them to make recommendations on well, what's good standard sizes that we can go back with um, with replacement components in order to be able to facilitate getting a pulley delivered on time and when it goes into service it's exactly what you need. Well, you covered a lot of really great information there Jeff and, and hopefully our customers understand how much they can benefit from a, a PPI conveyor survey and we invite them to join us again on the next Clearly Conveyed.